How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about chromatic enclosures. So if you didn't watch the video yet on diatonic enclosures, definitely uh, go up to the corner, click there, try to go down below, find that, find the link to that. Search Google Nick Finzer diatonic enclosures. You'll find it really quick. Uh, make sure you watch that before you do this one because uh, otherwise you're skipping a step here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stick with C major and practice enclosures. Again, a quick overview of enclosures is where uh, you're taking something like a scale or an arpeggio and you're surrounding the important notes. In this case, we're going to surround every single note so that we can uh, explore what that might sound like. Uh, but this is giving you more bebop vocabulary. It's giving you more things to extend the line. It's giving you more facility around the horn, controlling chromatics, knowing which notes are chord tones and non-chord tones, how to place them rhythmically, and a bunch of things surrounding that. So let's take our C major scale. Sounds like this. Right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chromatically surround every single note, like this. So at first you might seem like, well, that sounds really strange. Well, yeah, it does. But the faster you go, the more you'll realize that it sounds like bebop. And then maybe you'll only use a select few of these. But right now we're, you know, we're trying to practice it around every chord tone. You could just play around the uh, the arpeggio, like. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways you could do it. I changed the D natural to D flat there at the end. But I just wrote it out in the PDF down below uh, dealing with each one. Because again, you have to use this stuff that we're working on this month. You have to take it and make it your own. Like no, no PDF, no book, no transcription is going to help you understand how to use this material. So this is just like inspiration that I hope you'll take and make it your own. Like my exercise is not the best exercise. It's just one way to show you the idea of the exercise and then you can take it and run with it. And I'd love to see what you guys do with it. So send it back to me, tag me so I can see it. But one more time, we're going to play that exercise going up so you can hear what that sounds like. We're putting a half step above and below each note of the scale. One, two, three. <laughs> And then we can kind of go back down the other direction. Again, we're surrounding. This time, instead of coming from above, like we went, we're going to go the other way. Underneath, above, and then back down, because you can do it both ways. One, two, three. So on trombone, this is one of those things that make you have to be super, super careful, super, super accurate with the intonation, especially as you go faster. You have to be really careful to make sure the intonation is going there. So we're practicing that. It's on the whole scale. Like I said, you could just do it on the arpeggio, but the idea is to be able to play in C major and then add these diatonic from before and now new chromatic together give you material to play over C major, you know, so maybe something like this. Or something like this. You could hear maybe a mix of chromatic and diatonic enclosures around those chord tones. can start to identify when you want to have inside and outside notes. And so all of those chromatics are really strong. So when we talk about in playing bebop language that's controlling the chromaticism, this is what I'm talking about, controlling, knowing what those surrounding tones are. So this is the first step. Take your major scales and play chromatic enclosures around each note, and then you can apply it to arpeggios, and then you can start to try to take your diatonic ideas and start to add some chromatic enclosures. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below and uh, we will catch you in the next video.